Hello everyone, it's Francesco here and in this video what we're going to be doing is going over the best Sunrise alternatives on both iOS and Android. Now I'm very excited for this feature, so let's get stuck in. So let's get started with iOS and Apple Calendar as a beginning point. So as you can see, Apple Calendar is very simple. It's available and built in on iOS devices and Mac and there's no real thrills or spills about this app. It's very decent, it works well, it integrates with iCal and Google Calendar and Outlook as well. As you can see by the Mac app, there's real basic functionality, adding events, searching, you know, controlling what event goes where, that sort of thing, there's no real integration. But it works well and you can like pin certain uh, events as well, which is quite nice as all day and there's quite a nice functionality on iOS. If you're into using your native application, that's great. And this is a little enhancer for it. So an app called Schedules allows you to, both on iOS and Android, to integrate your favorite calendars. Whether it's F1 or BBC News or any top sporting team, you can basically add any of the interesting events. It's essentially the same technology and actually is the same technology that sponsors the interesting calendar section in Sunrise. And there are some really fantastic calendars here, so I definitely recommend checking that out. It's $1.99 on both iOS and Android, but they've got a free month to use. So next up is an application called TinyCal, and it's one of the applications on iOS that actually impressed me. There's a free version and a premium version that's $4.99, but essentially this calendar is very basic, but offers a really strong viewing options. So as you can see, there's uh, some really nice viewing options, menus options as well, and also general settings are quite strong. Search features are pretty strong too, and the general listing and abilities to see anything you want at any given time is very nice. I would say this app is one of the best for being able to view things at a glance. One thing I would note is that in the free version they do have ads and sometimes you can accidentally click on them and go to the site, which is slightly annoying, but you know, it's a compromise. Uh, as you can see, I've just done it here and it, it did annoy me a little uh, when I was playing around with it. Up next is Google Calendar. And this is something that I think a lot of Sunrise users went straight over to when they heard the announcement because of its basic functionality and availability on a lot of networks. As you can see, Google Calendar's iOS app is very beautiful. It does do a good job of making things really simple to add and very beautiful to add too. They've got really clear, beautiful colors on the iOS version too. They also have a really impressive listing here, so you get the ability to add goals and reminders and all sorts. The Android application is great too. It does the same sort of thing as iOS, so you sort of don't fall over if you've got the same experience or you've got an Android and an iPhone device. But the web version is something to be improved on by Google. They said they would in I, oh, uh, 2015, but they haven't. And it's something that could definitely be improved on. Now, Time Page by Moleskin impressed me. The application gave me a notification about the weather and it actually rained directly after, suggesting it was 15 minutes away. Now, this app has had a dramatic change. As I entered the app, there was an update about the Time Page's new assistant feature. Essentially, the assistant is allowing you to kind of go a bit deeper with your calendar and sort of your weather and events. It's sort of trying to be a Google Now. But essentially, this calendar offers you a very cool and simple gesture-based experience, allowing you to add all of the details you need to, people, reminders, repeats, location, but in a very simplistic way. As you can see, you can sort of scroll through events and scroll through uh, all of the calendar features at the same time, but there's a sort of playfulness around it. So this was the assistant feature I mentioned at the start, and from here you can actually get daily briefings about the weather and sorts of information as you go across your day, whether it's you know follow-ups and, and actually time to leave events, and there's very nice gestures when setting this up. So it's, it's essentially trying to allow you to be you know, more attentive to the details of your calendar, which is quite nice. Um, I really appreciated this detail, especially some of the settings. Uh, the settings go into real detail um, and real value as well. 
This application is iOS only, but for $2.99, you're getting a very insightful, very gesture-based and fun calendar app to use. There's not a great deal to say about Cal, which is from AnyDo. I mean, it's a free application on both iOS and Android. It's very basic to use. You can add things like people, you know, reminders, notes to each of the calendar events. But you can tell this is very web-based um, in the sort of style and the way the loading of the pages happen. I'd recommend this Cal for any iOS or Android users who are looking for a simple and basic experience one that interjects uh, with their any do feel. I mean, it's a little clunky. There are some really nice settings as well. So you can actually change the details, things like, uh, you know, what days certain things happen, the color, the background imagery. So it's sort of very customizable, but I would advise this for anyone looking for a very simple experience. So next up is Fantastic Out 2, and this is available on both iOS and Mac. It is $2.99 on iOS and $29.99 on Mac, but it is one of the best calendar experiences. This I rate very highly, I've reviewed this before, it has a great iOS application, has strong settings and also the ability to add you know, smart calendar events as well, very simple to use. One thing I'd never tried out before actually doing this review is the Mac application. The Mac application is fantastic. It offers a very clean, very simple, basic experience that, you know, the, the actual creation of an event is sort of an event itself. It's very interesting to use, uh, very fun as well. So I definitely recommend getting the Mac app. The iOS app is good. Um, I recommend Calendars 5 above it but I still think it's a fantastic application for anyone looking for a sunrise replacement. So this is BusyCal 3.0. It's available on both iOS and Mac for around about the same pricing as Fantastic Out 2. So the application itself on iOS is very basic. Uh, I say that about a lot of applications, but this one didn't really serve much uh, opportunity for me to sort of explore a bit more. The one thing I did like about it, and the same reason I liked TinyCal, is the ability to see different features. And the ability to add events was fairly easy too. The Mac application as well didn't really impress me a great deal. The only thing that I found different about it was the ability to add sticky notes, things like journals, things like to-dos. I've seen to-dos in a couple of other applications, but I mean, the sticky notes looked a bit confusing when I added them to this, the actual uh, calendar. They sort of looked a bit clunky. But anyway, this app on Mac really served a basic functionality purpose, sort of adding events, and adding details as soon as you could. So this application will look very familiar. This is Calendars 5 by Regal. I have reviewed this before on my YouTube channel. I will link to that re review in the description. It goes into full detail on the app. This is the application I've been using on iOS over the last couple of weeks for the pure reason that the view is fantastic. You can change the options um, and actually you know, edit quite fast. There's previews, which is quite nice. And the ability to add events is the smart feature, which is also in Fantastic Out 2. I really like this application. They've done a really nice job at making it simple and clear for anyone new users, anyone coming in to actually get started with. It's available on iOS only at the moment, so you can view on iPad, and it does come at a price, so $4.99 for the application. Readle have a history of building strong applications, PDF expert, documents, all sorts, so they've done a good job, and they're improving it every day. So I definitely recommend downloading it. Uh, make sure to use it on iOS only. They're building a Mac app, so keep an eye out. For all those thinking that I wouldn't include an Android application, here is a great one. So this is Today Calendar, created by a developer called Jack Underwood. And this is the closest and probably the best 
Android calendar experience I can imagine. Uh, I use this if I'm on my Android device because it's so simple to use, very beautiful um, in UI design. One thing they've done with this application is made a free version and a pro version. The pro version is about £2.50 um, and I'll include all of the links in the description. But I highly recommend this one for ease of use and just a general happy and pleasurable experience. So what we have here is Soul Calendar and Soul Calendar is available on Android. It offers a very easy to view experience and this is another application that doesn't lack in the views options. So you can actually see views with your to-do list as well um, and they sort of make it really easy to see um, that kind of month view as well and that sort of agenda view. I'm not too sure I would use this daily but it does sync with things like Google Tasks and also that sort of agenda list does look very nice once using it over a couple of weeks. So this is a calendar. It's available on Android for free, but there is a, a calendar plus pro version, but which basically gives you more functionality and features. Essentially, the service is very similar to today calendar, but offers a more kind of views, uh, more opportunity to add different uh, calendar styles. So you can actually add birthdays and all sorts from different uh, contacts on your phone, uh, and it does integrate with that. The A Calendar Plus is available for, I think it's $3.99. There are other options when looking at that, but essentially it's a very basic calendar on uh, Android. So to finish up, what I wanted to do with you is go over a few notable mentions, uh, specifically on web. One that I found was called Kin.today. It's unavailable at the moment, it's in beta, but it, it claims to be a real Sunrise competitor. One thing that I did was check out their social media and it looks like a lot of people were talking about it. It actually got recently featured in the Trello suggestions to get started, so I'm looking forward to playing with that one a little. This is Sunsuma. It's another application which I was contacted about and essentially it's, you know, the sort of sunrise for teams. You can essentially create the regular teams, uh, you know, the regular calendar events that you normally do, but you can add things like agendas, projects, um, and details to a certain thing, and also tasks from any of your um, sort of events. So you can sort of create this agenda, sort of teamwork thing. You can use it individually or within a team, but it sort of tries to collaborate a lot of um, organization software with your calendar experience. So that's Sunrise, and I think they're doing a stellar job under Microsoft. But what a lot of people do is tend to like uh, get out. But I think I think you should definitely stay in there with Sunrise um, experience. So I really think that people should sit with Sunrise. I I hundred percent believe that they might integrate uh, Wunderlist Sunrise as one specific tool, or merge them into two tools and actually have something there, which will be really exciting um, and definitely something to look out. Especially because Microsoft are really really business focused as well. So after all of those suggestions, many people have been asking me, what do I use now Sunrise is gone? And I'm in the same situation. Sunrise was an amazing application. I had so much riding on it. I had, I made so many tutorials, I made so many features. I wanted it to be the biggest productivity app in the world because it was one of the greatest productivity apps in the world. But sometimes things happen for a reason. Microsoft bought it because they needed to bring it into their Outlook system. Now, that wasn't beneficial for a lot of people, but they needed to do it because they wanted to really drive their business experience. And we're going to miss out. At the moment, I'm using Calendars 5 on iOS and Fantastic Out 2 on Mac. I recommend Android users use Today Calendar and also anyone who wants a sort of consistent experience across the board should use Google Calendar. I think they're the best suggestions. I think there's a lot of new applications that will try and rival this, that will try and bring uh, a new part and be the new sunrise. But we always have to explore where are they available, how are they available, are they available on all devices, are they available in the same sort of style. We have to always be open-minded. But we always have to remain vigilant with certain applications in case they go bust.